Okay, well, a little bit about uh, MySQL while my machine restarts. Um, <clears throat> Um, so MySQL, I'm, I'm a locally based MySQL uh, sales uh, solutions architect uh, here in New York City. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is the MySQL document store, which is basically um, the, the concept behind the, our document store is that it's um, a place where you're going to be storing uh, JSON documents, which are JavaScript object notation, which everybody's probably fairly familiar with. Um, so, the idea of storing JSON in MySQL came in the last major release, which was MySQL 5.7, about four, about four years ago now. And um, we initially added a number of functions for being able to manipulate JSON in the database. So you could, uh, you could actually get results from the database as JSON, or you could put JSON into a table. It, we had a, a native column type called JSON document. And uh, we added a number of different things to be able to uh, store JSON effectively inside MySQL. <clears throat> One of them being uh, the ability to uh, take a table, uh, take a bunch of JSON objects and then turn them into a table. Uh, and then you can also conversely do the opposite and take regular structured data uh, it, from a select statement, the output of a select statement, and you can say instead of putting this in row format, I want this as a series of JSON objects. Uh, then what we did in the next, <clears throat> in, in the uh, next iteration in MySQL 8, which came out a little over a year ago, is we added an actual native API to be able to code in any language and just, and just basically take JSON objects or take your native language objects and throw them into the database as JSON objects and store them in a JSON column. Uh, we created these default tables uh, that are called collections. Um, okay, so now it's, uh, we're rebooted. And hopefully we're going to, uh, Sorry, I just need to uh, find the last thing that uh, found my presentation now. Hmm. Okay, can you uh, switch over to uh, this display? And I'll see if we're... Uh, We've solved our problems yet. Okay, and I'll see if we've got it, if it's any better now. Doesn't, doesn't seem to like it. Uh, yeah, let me do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so. This is not good. content, is that what this is called? That's it. Uh, sure. Uh, oh, let's try plugging that in again. Okay. I should have saved it too there. Oh no, that wasn't the right folder. Okay, let's try it one more time then. All right, okay, so I've got slides. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead to uh, some of the things that I've talked about. So 
the specific MySQL that I'm going to be talking about here is uh, what we call MySQL in ODB cluster. And um, if you're not familiar with uh, the newer versions of MySQL, um, in MySQL 8, you can actually, we have a, a self-healing form of replication uh, called group replication. And uh, so then MySQL is able now, to, you can have multiple replicas that are either in multi-master or single master mode. And then in front of that, you can use another lightweight tool that we've built called MySQL router. And the router will, as the name indicates, route to the, the appropriate one of your, of your network. Um, so this makes it a lot easier to have a highly available MySQL cluster. And, and then you can also, over this, you can use this new API that I'm gonna talk about. Um, and uh, so I will go through <clears throat> some of the different things that we have. And so this is the basics of uh, what I mean by the relational versus the, the JSON document model. And so a lot of developers are used to getting their data as JSON documents. Um, and it's, it's an easy way to, uh, to interact with web pages and to collect information and just, you know, to be able to not have to worry about things like third normal form and SQL and uh, things like that. So um, we wind up having, you, but there's trade-offs, of course. Um, <clears throat> you wind up having concerns about what, how much duplicated data you have. Uh, the, the beauty of third normal form is that you know, if somebody changes their address, you change it in one place and it is reflected in all the places where you link to their address, whereas if everything is truly in these blobs of data, then you can wind up having to you know, change an address in every single blob of data. So databases are very good at being able to have normalized and uh, normalized structure and get greater da data integrity. Um, I'm gonna skip through some of these things and just kind of talk to you about uh, the importance of, um, of the document store and, and how it works. So the three things, as I was saying before, the three things that make up the document store are the JSON data type, being able to store JSON natively inside of MySQL. And obviously there's, there's more to it than just, you know, you can think of JSON as a text file and a lot of databases will just treat JSON as a, as a blob or a text file. But um, in MySQL, when you input JSON, it's a native JSON data type. So basically when you input something into a JSON column, it's going to make sure that it is valid and well-formed JSON. And it will also recognize the individual types inside there. So if you've got, if one of your fields is always an integer, it'll know to store that as an integer type. If one of your fields is always a date, it'll know to store that as a date type. And you can do all the things that you would imagine, all the functions that allow you to manipulate those native types, you can do to these pieces of a JSON document. Um, in addition, it winds up being much more efficient on space uh, because obviously an integer takes up less space than its uh, string equivalent. Um, and you can also, uh, and in addition to getting the, uh, the type safety of storing the, the things as they actually are, you also are able to do joins to existing data in the database and also to, um, to uh, do you know, date math or uh, find the highest integer or things like that. You can do all the things you would imagine you'd be able to do with the native type. Now, as I said, uh, in MySQL, we've got all these functions that let you do things like you can extract the JSON or input JSON, and then while it's in there, you can inspect it, you can do searches through the fields of a JSON object, you can join it to the other data, whether it's JSON data or your regular relational data. Um, and then one of my favorites that we also added in, uh, in version eight was that um, if you have JSON and you want to do the opposite, is that you want to actually turn this into regularly structured or regular database table, we have this value, we have this, um, this function called JSON table, where as you can see in this example, you can take these JSON objects and you can say, hey, I want to turn this into columns and here's the types that I want to use for the columns. So your databases um, can be, you can have developers that are just throwing JSON with all of the formats it can have and not worrying about things like data integrity and, uh, and duplications and things like that. And then behind the scenes, or even just in triggers, your DBAs can actually turn that into well-formed third normal form data. <clears throat> Including indexing it uh, and being able to create what we, these things called virtual columns that we also uh, brought in with uh, version 5.7 where you can actually just declare that there's going to, I want to have this piece of these JSON documents, I want to have available 
as an actual column to anybody who does a select statement on this table. Um, and I want it to appear to be a date or I want it to appear to be a var car or something like that. And then you can put an index on that. And you can decide if you want to have that always be created on the fly, it can do that by, you know, it can be a truly virtual column. Or you can say that you want it to be stored and, and generated where it will actually write out. Um, obviously, the trade-off is you take up more disk space, but you get faster access where it will actually write out that data as it's, as it's uh, updated or inserted. So um, the other part of it that we added to this is, of course, that the database is intelligent about how it manipulates JSON. So if you update a field in a, a JSON document or in a series of JSON document, it's not going to, as with a text or a blob, it's not going to rewrite that entire column. It's just going to know that you want to, you want to rewrite one part of that. So obviously you get a performance gain from that. <clears throat> Now then the next thing that we added on was this X protocol. And so the X protocol is a brand new way of interfacing, of talking to the database. And actually you get, uh, we've added a, a number of tools to be able to do this. So now if you're a developer, and again, if you, if you think of yourself as a NoSQL developer, if you're used to working with Cassandra or Mongo or any of those, um, you can actually interact with the database without using SQL. You, we have our, our new command line tool, the MySQL shell, allows you to just interact with the database in Python or in JavaScript in addition to uh, doing it in uh, SQL. And you can switch between these on the fly. So you can create objects and you can say, I, wanna, I want you to give me the results of this query um, as a, a series of JSON objects or as a regular table result set, and I'll show you some examples of that. But this is, the, uh, the other thing that we did is, you know, since basically we got to uh, rewrite, create a new uh, protocol, a new way of the server and client talking to one another, we based it on Google protocol buffers, and we made it asynchronous, and we made it uh, secure by default, and so there's a lot of things that just our developers were very excited to be able to do because, you know, it's, we, the other one was designed in 1995, so the idea of being able to rethink what you want from your communication between the client and server was wonderful. And this is a quick uh, look for those of you who are curious about what a protocol buffer is going to look like as to what it actually looks like under the hood and how you wind up sending messages. And obviously, you know, some of our larger customers like Twitter and Facebook, um, as well as booking.com have actually given us feedback on, you know, hey, we want to be able to do these things um, with the buffers, and we want to be able to do asynchronous, multi, we want to be able to return multiple result sets at a time. We want to be able to not have to wait for things to finish and have non-blocking communication between the client and server, and all those things are, are kind of being put into various levels of this new uh, way of talking to the database. And the way that it works is that um, we have all of our drivers, all the drivers that we maintain, now have this second way of talking to the database with the X protocol. And there's an X API and it talks to a plugin on the server side that's been available again since 5.7 um, using this new protocol by default. So MySQL listens to, on the traditional uh, uh, protocol, it listens on port 3306. And then the, the X protocol listens by default on 33060. <clears throat> so you just have to have a new port opened on your server and suddenly you have all these new clients that can connect to the database in a new way. So um, I'm going to get into now a little bit about uh, how you talk to, that ser to the server with these things. So it's... Uh, as I said, we, we try to, at MySQL, we always try and embrace as many standards as we can. We're kind of working towards the SQL 99 standard with uh, whenever we develop new things like the uh, stored procedure language we added in version 5 or the uh, functions and triggers, those are all standards compliant. And with this as well, we went with standard JSON and, and as I said, it's checked for validity as you enter it into the database to make sure that you're putting in valid JSON and it's broken down into the native uh, parts of the native SQL types that you're using. And then um, our, and then the API is, uh, I'm gonna, most of these examples are gonna be in Java, but the Java and Python and uh, JavaScript and .NET APIs all look very, they all look very natural to people who are, um, to, who are programming in those particular languages. And again, there's, it's, you know, they call it a NoSQL uh, NoSQL plus SQL equals MySQL is, uh, is the 
saying that we came up with because this is, you don't need to learn any SQL. So you work with uh, collections of JSON documents, or just documents as I'll call them, uh, are, make up a collection. And a collection under the hood is actually just gonna be a native MySQL InnoDB table that has one column for the generated ID and one column for the JSON data itself. And uh, you can see that um, there's, there's very, simple, um, very simple code to uh, add a new object. You just create this. I, in this example, I'm, adding a, I'm creating a new object on the fly, but this could be, it will actually unmarshal and marshal Java objects um, by breaking down their fields and figuring out how to turn these into uh, JSON on the fly if you're just passing in those as well. And um, you wind up having a very, uh, you, so you have this uh, method chaining um, to be able to build very complex queries without, again, without having to use SQL, where you basically tell it what you wanna do, you create parameters, bind values to them, and then you can do all the things that you would expect to be able to do uh, from an SQL command, like you can group by, you can, check for, um, you can check for the presence of particular fields, you can do searches, you can limit the number of things that you're gonna have, and you can sort it. And as you can see in this example, you do that all by just chaining one method onto another method onto another method, and then calling execute at the end. So some more examples that you, uh, you can do all the basic CRUD, as they're called, uh, functions with these. And uh, we put a lot of flexibility into this. We knew that you know, developers don't like to have to learn a new API for every single database, and unfortunately there is no standard for, um, for the way that you interact with a NoSQL. It's, you know, it's, NoSQL is sadly defined by what it's not. So you don't get to know what a NoSQL database will definitely understand. So we're very flexible. If you want to use square brackets, if you want to use curly brackets, if you want to use JavaScript style notation to be able to define your uh, objects as you enter them, all of those work. And you can kind of, if you look closely, you'll see that, that I've got different kinds of brackets in these examples. <clears throat> and we tried to make it be um, as natural for people who you know, have a basic concept of what they would be doing in SQL. So, you know, we kept group by, we kept sort and limit and offset, and these are all SQL-ish terms, but they're also uh, fairly plain English to be, able to, um, to be able to work with these things. But then what we also gave you, because you're, doing, because you're at the end of the day inserting things into a real relational database, you get to do things that real relational databases do, like have transactions and have save points, um, and be able to, uh, be able to keep track of exactly what is going on at any given point and, uh, and only save data that is correct. And as an added bonus also, I think this might only be in the, uh, in the JDBC driver right now, but uh, you can also uh, add on the locking that you want to use. You can, you can lock so that you're the only person who is changing a particular set of records at a particular time and then release that lock when you're ready to or, or create a shared lock for that matter. So then here's a, a slightly more complex example of um, exactly how you can, you can actually create expressions. And uh, if you wanna call, if you know your database functions that you wanna call, or even if you create database functions, um, which again, you could do as UDFs, as user-defined functions using an external programming language or more commonly just in SQL or have a database administrator create a function for you. You can still call those from your code and again, it winds up, it still looks a lot like you're just writing Java code. This isn't a whole bunch of SQL strings that you're building together and then throwing at the database and hoping they work. And somehow I got this slide in there twice. And uh, as I said, a lot of the uh, administrative functions as well, like you can still create indexes um, to be able, uh, on these collections. Um, and it'll do all the work of creating, as I said, the virtual column for you and then and then deciding that how that's going to be generated and then actually creating the physical index on top of that. Now that's for collections. Um, if you want to use this API to work with tables, we have a similar set of uh, objects and, and methods that allow you to do things um, on the actual tables. So you can see here that I've created a table called colors that has the different colors in them and then 
Uh, this API looks a little bit different in that you actually use words like insert instead of add, and, and you're creating a table object, not a collection object. But that's the way that you tell this API, I'm working with, this is not a series of JSON documents, this is an actual SQL table, but I don't want to use SQL to interact with it. So you wind up uh, being able to, uh, <clears throat> to create um, the, these tables and actually create regular tables of structured data um, using the same API that you use to interact with the collection so that you don't have to go back and forth between SQL and NoSQL, essentially. Uh, to be able to use this, you're going to need a slightly newer version of our uh, connector. So uh, you need to have uh, Java 8 or 9 to be able to, uh, to use all of these, all, to talk to the new protocol and to use all these new APIs. Um, but we still, we're still maintaining the older connector for people who are using older versions of Java. And uh, you, you will not get to use the uh, X protocol, but the connector obviously still works as a Java connector. <clears throat> so these are just a few use cases. As I said, um, the, uh, if you want to, you can, you can use uh, the MySQL document store can be used for, if you have an existing table, if you have an existing database where you haven't been using, you haven't been storing anything in JSON, but you kind of want to move in that direction, you can start deciding that you want to have things come out of the database as JSON objects. And that's how your programmers are going to work with them. And these, this can be done either through uh, SQL or through the X API. And then you have the, you know, your DBAs can basically maintain the layer of turning, of uh, turning that uh, that nice uh, third normal form database structure into something that can be interacted with as a series of JSON objects, or the reverse, as I as I was saying before, is that you can have things come in as documents, but then once they're inside the database, you can turn them back into a relational structure, um, and then decide how you're going to get them out, or have multiple things interact with the same database. And then probably the, uh, the uh, most common way to do these is, uh, is with this. This is uh, what a, a collection looks like, uh, is that you'll see that it has this field called doc that is a JSON object, and then it has this field called underscore ID that is um, a generated identifier so that, you, you, so that every JSON object has a unique identifier to it. And obviously there's a, there's a number of different ways you can do it. But here's, so then, this is just a quick overview then of um, how the, uh, <clears throat> of how it all puts together, of how it all fits together is that um, if you're operating, if you're talking to a collection, then your methods for are add, find, modify, and remove. If you're talking to an SQL table, then you create these table objects instead of collection objects, and you've got insert, select, update, and delete. Um, and these things, and so on the relational side, you do things like build where clauses and things like that, whereas on the uh, document side, you just create find statements, and you put in your logic into the find statements of exactly what you're looking for, and how to, and how to search it. <clears throat> Let me see. Well, I've rushed through and uh, gone through my slides far too fast now, um, so I'm going to back up a little bit. So um, the uh, uh, creating result sets in Java, um, you wind up, uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm calling uh, the concat method, which is, if you're familiar with MySQL, it's to concatenate strings. But any, so again, any function inside of MySQL created or, or native to the database can be called from the, uh, from the X API. And you just call it with these expression objects. And you can create your own Java objects as well that can, uh, that can manipulate those, the data as, as it's coming out for you. And now um, that's actually happening. So this all happens inside of, the, uh, inside of that X engine. So the X engine is the thing that, that basically is taking the, uh, is, is taking the native uh, document API and then under the hood it's converting these things into SQL and, uh, and building your JSON objects or tearing them apart. Uh, before they come and go from the database. So, um, and then again, the uh, creating indexes. You, when you 
create them on the database side actually in SQL, you have a lot more flexibility because you can decide exactly whether they're going to be uh, creating indexes with the API in its current form is limited to basically telling it that you want to, that you're going to have uh, what, what type of index you want it to have and then that it's going to be generated. So you, you don't have quite all the, uh, you don't get to decide whether it's going to be physically written to disk or whether it's going to be created on the fly and you don't get to um, decide exactly uh, where it's going to be stored inside the database. But these are all, uh, by default, MySQL is storing everything inside of InnoDB. That's the, still the main storage engine for the document store. And it'll be one file per table. I'll go back through here. Um, so does anybody have any questions? I'm sorry, I went through that. Uh, I lost a lot of time at the front, so I kind of went through a lot of this stuff very fast. Um, does anybody have any questions about uh, the, uh, the document store or the X API right now? Okay, well. I'm sorry? When you do an update. Oh yeah, so that was one of the big changes from MySQL 5.7 to MySQL 8, is now when you do an update, it's only updating basically inside of the database. Um, as I said before, uh, a JSON document is actually treated as a number of, as all the fields are treated as native uh, types. So if you do an update where you say like, you know, update the age from you know, 46 to 47 for everybody who was born in you know, 47 years ago, um, then it will actually just physically update those bytes that have that integer value in there. So it's, yeah, it's not only not, only not storing the, the you know, numbers, the string of representation, but it's also doing just that update. So yeah, I mean, I, I have another presentation of the performance enhancements that we have in 8.0, and that's one of the major ones, is that if you have you know, if you have millions of documents in a table and you do a large update, that winds up being hundreds of times faster because you're not rewriting all of those. You're not rewriting a whole series of blobs. You're actually just rewriting little pieces of all of them. And then again, that can also be, um, you, if you have an index on that, uh, on that, you know, age field, then it's that much faster because that index points to those individual bytes inside of the row. Yeah, sure. Yes, you can, so you can, the question was, can you treat uh, fields inside of JSON documents and regular foreign keys with joins? And, uh, and yeah, that's one of the powerful things about it is that you can actually, uh, you can create, you can have two different, uh, you can have two different collections and then a number of relational fields in, in tables. And you can actually say, I want to join, you know, this, uh, this dollar sign, I'll, I'll get to um, the, uh, I think I've got this here. Well, that's not the... Um... So yeah, inside of, if you're, uh, it's, it's easier to uh, recognize in the SQL, but um, if I go to not going to like that. Okay. <clears throat> but if uh, if you if you use the SQL, then then the uh, the language is basically you could write doc and then a greater than and then uh, in quotes you can put dollar sign dot field name and that dollar sign dot field name can be joined to any column of the same type. Uh, in any other, in another collection or just in another table. We have one more back here. Sure. In your last slide, you had shown us that the default database engine was InnoDB. Yes. That, is that only for JSON documents? Can that be supported with the other database engine called RockDB? Um, well, something totally different. You currently, the, so these JSON, um, Things I don't think the only one that we would be supporting that with would be NDB, would be the other one that we would probably uh, put a lot of these things in. And NDB 
will, I think you can store JSON in there, but you're not going to get all those, you're not going to get the, the native type breakdown and you're not going to get those performance enhancements of the partial updates that I was talking about can before. Can you use a SQL on that, on those queries for the JSON documents? Or? Yes, and you can use, you can use, no matter how you're uh, storing your JSON, you can use the X API or you can use SQL or any of our native drivers and get, you know, the exact same Thank information. You. Hey, Philip, we have one more question over here. Sure. Thanks. The question is, how much is the memory overhead of the X engine on a typical MySQL if we want to use it? Uh, well, there is none. So basically, you just you, having the X plugin enabled, uh, there's no real significant memory overhead. Once you start, um, if you actually start going in there, then there is there's not really a memory overhead, but there is a certain performance overhead because basically, as I said, when the X API comes in and hits that X plugin inside the server, that plugin is is rewriting everything into you know native, into my into InnoDB's native uh, SQL and then passing that on to the optimizer. So there is there can be a performance overhead, but it's it's pretty minimal. I don't even know if we've benchmarked it. Okay. And uh, let me see. Well, I guess thank you very much. Um, if there's no other questions, then uh, that's all I have. Thanks. <laughs>